Hello, I'm John McNamara. Welcome to the MQ Lite Hangout. I'm here today with a number of gurus from the MQ Lite team, and we're going to talk to you about some new developments in MQ Lite, some fantastic news, and give you a fantastic demo as well. Um, but the first thing, um, let's go and introduce the team. Um, we have got today Steve Upton. Steve, do you want to say who you are and what you do at IBM? Hey, so uh, I'm Steve. I'm a developer and tester for MQ Lite. Awesome, buddy. Matt, do you want to go next? Yeah, sure. Thanks, John. Uh, my name is Matthew Whitehead. Uh, I've been working on the MQ Lite team uh, since its inception um, and uh, continuing to work on the development of the MQ Lite product. Marvelous. And um, David, do you want to go next? Hi, I'm David Oliver. I am in uh, the documentation team. Awesome. Okie dokie. So, um, now, guys, uh, let me just offer you the opportunity to ask questions as it is um, a live broadcast. Um, if you want to tweet to us on Ask MQ Light, we shall uh, answer or do our best to answer uh, your questions. Okay, so um, Matt, do you want to give us a quick introduction into the demo we'll be seeing today? Yeah, of course. So uh, we're going to show you a number of different technologies. Um, we thought we'd show you a bundle of things being used all in all in one go to show you how they can be used together. So we're going to have um, a combination of Node-RED, which I'll talk about a bit more, uh, to wire everything together. We're going to talk about uh, IBM Bluemix, which is where we're going to run the demo. So it's in the cloud, um, and it's a place you can go and try things out uh, yourself. So Node-RED is going to run in the cloud. Um, and we're also going to show a couple of other technologies. So first of all, the IBM Watson Beta in Bluemix. So um, we'll talk about Watson as well later on, um, but you'll doubtless have uh, heard of it. Um, and also MQLite itself. So we'll be using MQLite once we've got the basic application uh, to improve the application. So we're wiring together MQLite, Node-RED, and Watson all inside uh, IBM Bluemix. OK. So. Um... We mentioned a number of components there. Um, Steve, do you want to take us through MQ Lite? Sure. So MQ Lite is messaging. It's application messaging, and what it does, it allows you as a developer to wire up your, yeah, your applications, different parts of application, different parts of the same application, get different languages talking to each other, and allows you to uh, send bits of, bits of data between them. You can use that for worker offload. You can use it for scalability. You can use it to enable completely new types of apps as you get bits of apps that previously had no way of talking together, uh, get, get, get them working together. And what we've done with MQLite is we've tried to make it really developer-focused. We've tried to make it super accessible. Uh, if you want to download it, it's literally, you download it, uh, you, you unzip it, and you run it. There's no install. We try to lower the barrier to entry. Super cool API, so we'll be, we'll be, we'll be talking about uh, a bit of that later. Uh, easy to run in Bluemix, and some really cool developer tools. We've got the, uh, the web UI, so you can always see exactly the state of your system. Super useful for, for, for answering those little questions you get when you're developing apps. Uh, and yeah, that's, uh, that's MQ Lite in a nutshell. It's, it's developer-focused application messaging. OK, so we've got a, a, a question come through via Twitter, which is, uh, what languages are supported by MQLite at the moment, Steve? So right now, we support Node.js and uh, JMS. Uh, and one of our big bits of news, one of the big sort of uh, uh, things that's come out very recently is we now support uh, Ruby. So we just dropped a, uh, an early access driver for our, for our uh, first Ruby gem. Uh, and we'd really love people to download it, try it out, and let us know what you think. Uh, this is the same model that we used when we were developing MQLi and indeed the Node.js uh, uh, client libraries. We want to get it out in the wild early and get feedback. And that's what we did. We went out to conferences, we went out to developer events, and we got loads of feedback. And that, uh, and that allowed us to shape it uh, according to your needs. So uh, we've got, uh, obviously, our website. We've got our blogs. Um, Dave Oliver will be, uh, will be talking about that in a bit and how you can uh, I can see that, but we've got blog posts, we've got we've got little code snippets for Ruby, so it's super easy to get a hold of, and we really do encourage you just to uh, try it out and let us know what you think, so we can make uh, the Ruby gem that you want for MQLite. Fantastic. And the other question is, uh, can we say what languages we may be supporting in the future? Uh, so obviously, uh, obviously Ruby is the uh, is 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 the big one that we're working on right now. Uh, Python, we're we're uh, we're hoping to be coming out with soon. Uh, as to the others. 
Uh, we can't sort of can't say right now, but uh, we're always looking to uh, to work with other people uh, and 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 really increase our language support. So we're built on uh, built on AMQP, uh, the uh, the Open Wire protocol, so that allows uh, ourselves and others to build these clients. We're trying to keep we're trying to keep this as open as, open as possible, so other people, if they uh, if they like MQLite, uh, can step in and uh, and start making their own clients. That sounds phenomenal. Now, um, Matt. Could you give us a <laughs> could you give us a, an intro into the demo and uh, kick the tires for us and show us uh, what MQLite can do and uh, explain some of the components around the demo as well? Yeah, of course. So uh, let me just hit screen sharing. Let's make sure this is showing up okay. So hopefully, uh, hopefully now you can see um, a dashboard web page. Is that looking okay? Yeah. Great. Okay. So this is the Bluemix dashboard. Um, all of the demo is going to be done inside Bluemix. Um, if, if any of you want to try this, you can go to um, uh, bluemix.net and sign up for a free ID and try out a load of this stuff uh, yourself. You get an allocation of CPU and uh, RAM, um, and you can upload applications in uh, Node.js or JMS um, or other languages. Um, and try them out yourself. So what we're going to show you is, is how quickly you can uh, use Bluemix uh, to put together quite an effective app. So the basis of the demo is going to be an application um, where, for example, we would like to create a service where customers can tweet a question um, about travel advice and uh, have it answered um, for them. So it's a bit of a, a bit of a fun demo. Um, there'll be some uh, sort of uh, limitations of what we can show you in the demo, but hopefully it gives an idea of what you can do with um, uh, with Bluemix and Watson and Node Red really, really quickly, and then how MQLite can improve the application. So we'll just show you the applications that I've got in Bluemix here. I've got a variety of things. Some applications which um, could be as this one I'm highlighting here is is just a simple uh, Node.js application. Uh, or we've we've got on the the left where I've now got the cursor um, a sort of a composite application, uh, and that's my Node Red app, which we'll look at in a minute. Um, Bluemix also has uh, the concept of services. So if I scroll down, you can see that I've got a number of services which are reusable from different apps that I've pushed into Bluemix. And so some of these services are going to be used by the Node Red runtime. Um, here I've got an MQ Lite service. Uh, so if I want to offload work onto MQ Lite, which is one of the great things to do with MQ Lite. I can create a service in Bluemix just by clicking the Add Service button, picking MQLite from the list, and then um, quickly uh, Bluemix creates me one um, and allocates it to me. So these are services uh, which are reusable, and you use Bluemix by deploying apps and binding them to the different services they need. So they could be database services, MQLite services for messaging, um, and also there's a Watson service, which is what we're going to use to demo how Watson uh, can be used to um, to answer these questions, these travel questions we're going to get for us, because we don't want to have someone answering it all the tweets we get. We want Watson to do it for us. So I'm going to click into my Node Red application, and this takes us into a sort of a sub dashboard about the application. You can see here some of the services that I've bound to this application, so MQLite and Watson, um, and there's a database uh, service as well. Um, I can see the app health; it's all running fine. Bluemix is taking care of it for me. Um, and you'll actually see here there's a URL which is the, the public URL to get to my Node Red application. So I'm going to click on that and in a new tab it will load me my Node Red environment. So if you want to try Node Red, come and create a Node Red instance. It's very quick and, and Bluemix does a lot of the work for you. You can learn about it on this landing page. But we're going to go quite quickly into the, the Node Red flow editor. Um, and I've got uh, some bits and pieces pre-configured in Node Red, uh, so we can demo the important bits. Um, as I go through, I'll be explaining bits of Node Red so that you get an understanding for what's going on. So if you've not used Node Red, this is the palette, the flow editor, uh, where you can wire together different flows. So I've got one here, which I'll talk about in a moment. Uh, and on the left, I've got a whole load of different um, uh, endpoints that I can bring into my uh, flow. So some of them are for input, so I can input data and start a flow. Then some of them are for output, so once I finish the flow, I can I can send the output somewhere. Um, and then you've got different nodes like performing functions on the data, converting the data, transforming it, duplicating it. Um, 
uh, and other nodes along here. So we'll, we'll see some of those. I'm not going to talk about uh, the entirety of Node-RED, but I would recommend trying it out because it's very, very good for quickly mocking up uh, an application and then putting it into production. So this flow I've got uh, has got a few nodes I've already dragged onto the screen. So this is uh, one of the most interesting ones here. This node here, you can see is called Questions from Twitter. And um, all that's doing is if I open the node up, you can see that it's logged in as my Twitter account um, and it's configured to look for any direct messages my Twitter account gets. Um, and I've just labeled the node uh, so I know what it is on my flow. And all that's going to do is wait for direct message tweets from users. Um, I've then got a Watson node. So if I open up the Watson node, um, uh, there are two uh, choices for using Watson in its beta phase at the moment. So Watson's in beta, and we'll see some of the some of the questions and answers that flow through. The, the answers can be a little uh, little off the wall at times, but it's very much in beta mode. Um, but there are two um, categories of information I can ask Watson. There's the healthcare um, data set, and then the travel data set. Um, and all of this is going to be a travel um, question uh, service. So we've ticked travel, and we're just asking Watson to give us the top answer it can find. Um, I've then got down here a Twitter output node, and all that does is, as the same user as I've been DM'd on, it re, uh, retweets, well, it tweets uh, the answer, um, cut short to 140 characters if it's too long, and it just tweets that. So the user could DM uh, my username with a travel question, and, uh, and, and a few seconds later, uh, my user ID will tweet back automatically with a, with a suggested answer. Um, the other nodes on here, I've got some debug nodes which are really good. On this right hand side, I can look in the debug window and as data comes through the flow, uh, you'll see it pop up on the right hand side because I've got debug nodes wired up to it. And that allows me to test the flow, partly because uh, Twitter isn't always really responsive when we're doing live demos, so we wanted a way of driving some of the questions into Watson uh, if Twitter's being a little slow. Um, so, so that's my demo. Um, what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll quickly press the, the test button here, which injects a random question. And in this case, it's, uh, do I need injections to travel to Chile? And um, it's come back with, uh, this has gone into, into Watson. Um, Watson's answered it, and then it's come out um, at the back end of the flow. And it, this debug node has caused the answer to be, to be written out. So it, it's, it's actually, like I say, Watson's in beta. So the, the answer is about uh, injections a bit, but it's not completely answered the question. Um, but we're not going to focus too much on exactly uh, uh, the state of Watson right now in the demo. Uh, we just want to show the principle of wiring up an application really quickly. So we've demoed it with just me, me sort of pushing in a, a question in. Um, let's um, demo it with a tweet coming in. So I've got a, I've got the MQ Lite tweet Twitter uh, account up on another um, browser. Can you see that? Okay, John. Yep. Perfect. Right, so this is the MQ Lite Twitter feed. You can follow it at MQ Lite. Um, so I'm going to use this just to demo um, sending a, a message to this new service I've written. So um, I'm going to write a new direct message to um, my uh, personal uh, feed, uh, which is going to be um, uh, where is oh uh, I need to put the name of the person in first, obviously. Right, and there's previous questions I've got. Um, so where is best visit in New York? Right. So I've DM that message to um, the account that the Node Red Flow is following. And if we look in my Twitter feed, uh, we'll see that under messages, there's the question that's come in from the MQ Lite um, Twitter feed. Um, and we'll go back to the Node Red Flow. Now, hopefully, the, like I say, uh, the, the Twitter input to the node red flow actually polls Twitter uh, occasionally. So it'll take a, a few seconds for that to come through. So while that's coming through, and we'll see the answer come back out, um, I want to also show you um, how MQLite is going to improve this application. So I've gone back to my dashboard um, in, uh, in Bluemix. And you'll see what I've done is I've, I've created this MQLite instance previously, and I've bound it to node red. And that's so that Node-RED can use that service to offload some data. So um, if we're back in the Node-RED flow, um, if we have this one question come in and Watson answers it, and then it provides the answer straight away, that's easy and that's great. 
but that's just a, a single message coming in with a single response. Um, what happens if my service that I've created gets really popular and at the weekend loads of people are submitting questions um, and it starts to become a little shaky, it can't keep up with the amount of processing it needs to do um, in order to cope with the workload. And at that point you start to see applications fall foul of the, the huge increase in demand um, that they can have at peak periods. So in this flow, in order to help alleviate that, um, we're going to use MQ Lite nodes in the node red flow to offload the question uh, onto MQ Lite, and then as we have the processing capacity to take those questions from MQ Lite one at a time and then answer them, so that um, we can see how node red can then relax and, and not have to deal with all the messages straight away, and it can pick them off one at a time. Uh, you'll actually see on the right hand side, here, here's the tweet that's finally come through um, and the answer um, that uh, that Watson has come up with. Um, and it's actually quite a useful answer this time. It's talking about the different districts in, in uh, New York um, and the places that visitors might like to go. And if I go back to the MQ Light feed, uh, which should be following... Uh, let's just find the feed I'm following. Oh, got the wrong place. Uh, here we go. Ah, oh, look, there's the next tweet from my account, which is a tweet from the account I'm using saying about New York and the different neighborhoods. And obviously it's been cut short for Twitter, but you can see that having tweeted a question, uh, the, the response has automatically been run through Watson in Bluemix um, and the answers come back. So let's go back to improving this app. So I want to use MQLite to improve it. I'm going to then just delete the wiring that connects the questions from the Watson service. So let's move Watson out of the way for a moment. And we're going to use an output node, an MQLite output node, in place of the question answering service in Watson. And we're going to wire up all the questions. So the Twitter questions and also my, my sample uh, random question uh, bit of the feed. And I'm just going to open up the... Um, MQLite app and you can see it's picked the service that I defined previously and I'm going to uh, just choose a topic to publish these questions on. So let's uh, put Twitter slash questions and then offload to MQLite. So now any questions that come in from Twitter go straight to MQLite, not to the question and answer service. Now in order to answer those one by one we need an MQLite input node. So I'll drag that on. Um, it, again, it's got the same MQLite service. If I had more than one, I must make sure I pick the same one. Um, and then I've got to put in the same topic that I used uh, for um, uh, receiving these questions as, the, as I offloaded them to. So I've got Twitter slash questions, um, and I'm just going to leave that. Did I call that? Yeah, Twitter slash questions, just to check. So now I wire the input node from MQLite straight into the Q&A service. And um, I'm going to clear out the debug. And all I have to do now is redeploy that flow to Node Red, and I get a little green bar to say it's deployed. So all the questions go straight onto MQ Lite and come off of MQ Lite into Watson as it as it's ready to handle them. So just before we try a sample question again, I'm going to go back to the dashboard and to see what's going on in MQ Lite to check that I've wired that up correctly. I can click on the MQ Lite service, and that will load uh, the dashboard for MQ Lite. So um, this dashboard lets me see the MQLite service instance that I have in Bluemix. It lets me see which applications are connected to it, what messaging is taking place, and it means that if I've got something wrong in my application, I can go and debug it. So here's, here's my um, node red uh, dashboard. On the right-hand side, you can see we've got a receiving application, and that's because the input node, uh, let's go back to node red, this input node here, that is a receiver uh, from MQLite, so it's waiting for messages. Um, there are no sending applications because no messages have been sent. We haven't had any questions. If I just click on the connected list at the top, I can see two connected applications, and that's because each, each of these nodes makes its own connection. So we can come back to there in a moment and check that the questions have been offloaded first. So let's do a Twitter question first. So I'm back to the MQLite um, Twitter ID, and I'm just going to send another uh, another DM with another question so we give Twitter time to catch up uh, when is best to visit uh, China so I'll, I'll ask that question um, and because 
Twitter can take a little while. We'll also push in another random question um, with our test app. Oh, and this one is the same one about Chile. So let's push it again. How long is the flight from New York to Beijing? And you can see my test questions have gone in and come out quite quickly. Um, so let's go back to the MQ Lite dashboard and see if everything's working correctly. So now the dashboard's changed a bit. I've got a couple of messages in the middle, which is to show messages flowing through the system. Um, and I've also got a sending application on the left, and that's because Node Red has now sent some messages to MQ Lite to offload them. Um, three messages specifically, so I asked two questions in Node Red, and I also asked one on Twitter. And the receiving part of the flow has got all three. You can see that each each one of them's ticked off. It says one of one receivers, and they got it fine. And I can click on each of these to see details about the messages that went through the system, the topics they were on. Um, and make sure everything's working fine. But it looks like each message was sent and received. Um, and indeed, we've got the, the debug information to show that Watson has picked up the questions and answered them. So that's really improved the application. Now when it becomes really popular and it's a weekend or everyone's telling all their friends about my great app I've written, uh, it'll be able to cope with the workload. Um, and MQLite will take, uh, take all the heavy lifting away from the application. So. That's the end of the demo. It's really quick to try this yourselves. Um, and I'd encourage you to try Bluemix. Um, it's very quick and easy. The dashboard's really easy to use. And if you want to try and QLite standalone on your laptop, there's a version to download as well. And you get the same UI that you're looking at here. And it just runs inside your browser. So uh, John, I think at that point, I'll uh, stop my screen sharing. <laughs> and uh, I will hand back over to you. Buddy, that was Awesome! Thank you so very much. Um, amazing that you could you could actually put together applications so quickly, and uh, and and take information, data from Twitter, pass it through into into Watson, get a really cool response back out again in a matter of seconds, and do it live, and then show uh, work off with MQ Lite as well. Um, really fun. Well, thank you very much, buddy. So I guess the next step is to. Um, to really to show people how they can go about and do it themselves, and there's a there's a phenomenal blog article that 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 Matt's written on the MQLite blog. David, can you can you take us through the community and show the blog so that people can uh, can replicate Matt's awesome stuff? Absolutely. I'll uh, I'll just do some screen sharing of my own, and we'll take a look. Okay. So this is the uh, MQLite website. <clears throat> Yeah. Um, this is the community around uh, what uh, the, we delivered already. Uh, developer uh, license of the of MQLite, and you can also find on here the early access uh, version, which it, which supports Ruby. Um, the the whole community is accessed from here, so uh, you can download the various uh, uh, drivers. We have all the docs and all the support that you'd need. Um, there is uh, the various code snippets to help get you started. But Matt's blog is up here via the blogs button. So we'll just open this up. Um, a lot of the social uh, community stuff that we do is available here. So last week we did a Reddit AMA. You'll find other Google Hangouts on here. Um, and uh, we should have Matt's uh, uh, article just here, which will give you the, some guidance on actually setting this up for yourself and having a little look at, at what Matt did to get the MQ Lite working the way he did. Um, so as we move forward with the product, we'll also be uh, adding up great articles from people like Steve and Matt. And you can also contact us via Twitter to ask any questions and, and inspire us to write some more blog posts. Wow, buddy. That is awesome. Thank you so very much. And um, quick question: um, I think you may have shown it uh, before, but could you quickly do a quick screen share to show uh, where people can download MQLite from? Sure. Did th did my screen share not work then? I think I may have just missed it as you as you went through. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'll try and flash up the the website again. Um, and I'll uh, that what's up on the screen now is the the blogs. If I go back to here. Um, you can find the website at developer.ibm.com forward slash messaging forward slash mq dash light. Cool. Buddy, that is awesome. Well, 
gents, thank you so very much for taking part, and thank you, um, people on the internet, for joining in. Uh, I hope it's inspired you to have a play, download uh, MQ Lite, and um, use Matt's awesome blog to give it wool for yourself. It's tremendous fun, incredibly easy, and uh, again, we look forward to chatting to you some more about it. We do have one last question that's come through, and that is. Um, do we intend to show off MQ Lite at any meetups or uh, or hang or uh, hackathons? Steve, can I direct that to yourself? Sure, yeah. So uh, we're going to be at uh, Interconnect 2015 uh, in Vegas, uh, and we're always uh, we're always looking to uh, to get to uh, to other hack days, other events. Uh, I don't have anything uh, specific I'm aware of uh, before that, but we'll keep you posted. We were uh, we also have a blog post before we go somewhere. We're at mm -hmm. um, uh, London Java community uh, a few weeks ago, and we'll really just be trying to get to uh, to as many as we can. So uh, keep an eye on the blog, and we'll uh, we'll let you know. Super stuff, buddy. Well, guys, thank you so very much. Take care. Bye bye. Cheerio.